see we're golfing today at 440. It's okay. It's going to get some people talking. It's fine. <laughs> Good, doesn't she? No braces or anything? No braces. 
Good morning, everyone. Call to the Lord who hears our prayers. Sing to the Lord who delights in our songs. Wait for the Lord, the source of our hope. Worship the Lord who is worthy of our praise. Please join us in number 395, Take Time to Be Holy. Jesus, I know, I'm looking to Jesus. 
up for children's message today, I want to use the passage um, from Matthew. It's listed in your bulletin. And I'm reading from the message uh, translation. You are our Peter, a rock. And this rock, this is the rock on which I will put, to, put together my church. You are Peter, a rock. Well, got some rocks here. And I'm actually going to need a couple of friends from the congregation to come up. So, um, what, can I get uh, like three volunteers with masks on to come up and be my children's time? Sam. Julie's going to volunteer. Sam's going to come up. Can I get one from the back 40? Sandy's going to come up. Okay. A child at heart. Right, we're all children at heart. All right, so I want you to pick a rock. Just pick a rock. And, and let's, let's not let's stand over here um, so we're not in front of the channel. <laughs> all right, so pick a rock. So tell me, what are rocks to you? I like the driveway. Driveway? Yeah. Paint them with the kids. What about you? I don't know. Do you like to skip them on the water? Oh yeah. Do you ever try that? Yeah, yeah that's kind of cool. Um, I know when you're scouting, you probably do a lot of different things with rocks. Um, but have you ever thought about using a rock when your picnic table is kind of wobbly and you just gotta make sure that it's a little more stable? You know. Well, they used to actually build houses out of rocks. Sometimes we see them on facades of, of houses now, but they used to build houses. And that's why Jesus said to Peter, he first he changed his name. His name was really Simon. And he said, Simon, you, you are Peter the rock. You are a rock. And as he explained to Peter that he was the rock, then he said, I'm going to build my church on you. On part of your foundation, I'm building my church. Now, that's not easy. try to go further we might even knock that off um but it is a meditative type thing to to put rocks on top of one another if you google that you find amazing works of art so we and i do this because you know we are building the church upon each of you who are the rocks of the church each of us are part of the church and we're going to try to build that up to be the church again and as hard as this is sometimes it's going to be hard to build a church with all our different personalities and all our different expectations it's going to be tough but thank you very much because you are rocks in our life time for prayer and we have many prayer concerns that we have been sharing through the week um, there are some that have passed uh, some that uh, are, are ill there was an accident and a second accident so we want to pray for those people but that we are live feeding this we don't want to break anyone's privacy um, and uh, we don't want to you know share names and stuff so I'm just going to be kind of general but for our members who have been um, on the prayer list and knowing what we've been praying for, um, you'll know what we're doing. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to take it to the Lord's Prayer, okay? So let's pray. God, we are really grateful that we can be outdoors and um, walking around and seeing how the beautiful nature is growing. Thank you for being a part of our gardens and allowing things to grow. Thank you for being part of our our fields as we see the corn and the beans start to to
pick through the soil and had three or four or five leaves now. It's just beautiful to see. But all of nature is not all of what we are. We are also social creatures and um, we've been kind of hurt and um, confused about where our society is right now. Certainly there is injustice and we really would like righteousness and, and justice to roll down like the waters. But only Lord, you can, you can guide us in that. And, and uh, we ask Lord that, um, that all would listen to your scriptures and to follow your word as we try to love one another as best we can. We have many concerns in our community. There are some that have passed away recently and we think about them and, and wish them well. We, we miss being able to go and talk to them or talk to the families and honor them. But Lord, now that our friends are in your hands, we know that they are in a good place and we look forward to the day that we can honor them together. There have been two accidents that we know of recently and we, Lord, we ask you to watch over those, those young people, one, um, a young adult and her uh, fiance, um, airlifted to Peoria, um, two teenage boys here in Caneville. Um, we just know, Lord, that as you help them heal, and not just from the wounds, but from the trauma, the psychological trauma of going through an accident, um, they will give you the glory and, and praise and thanks. There are a couple that are ill, very ill. Um, our friend up on, on the corner store, is not well and lord we just want to ask your your loving hand to to be upon her as she goes through this time of trial and be with that toddler that we know of and the the young adult um, who's who's seeking you and does not know your face yet lord we lift all these things up to you and, and even more for, for our own souls uh, we lord lord we ask you to to come into our soul and comfort us and help us to get through this time together and as we roll out um, uh, our socializing again, help us not to be afraid and to put our trust in you. Lord, we thank you for all these gifts and more. And so we pray with the words of Jesus saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. of holy love, let us share signs of joy and peace with one another on this day. Peace be with you all. camera is panning, so wait.
dealing with troubles because we know how troubles can develop passionate patience in us and how that patience in turn forges the tempered steel of virtue, keeping us alert for whatever God will do next. An alert expectancy such as this, we're never left feeling shortchanged. Quite the contrary, we can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. Now please stand as you are able for the gospel. passage as it as it again reminds us that, that God is doing something new. God is doing something new for us. One of the things that we pick up with these verses, especially the uh, gospel lesson, is that the harvest is here. The harvest is, is available and ready to all of us. And God needs workers. God needs workers. And we know that that kind of means us. And we've been so busy battling the social climate, the fear of disease, battling even weather at times, that we're forgetting that our real job here is to bring in the harvest for the Lord. How are we going to get this done? You know? How are we going to return to church and, and to, to pull in others that, that are kind of on the outskirts of our community, on the outskirts of that page and, and bring them into what we're doing here at church. Perhaps we need to post a job description and see if anybody will will uh, apply for our job, interview candidates, and then possibly take the, the best one. You know, that's the way it used to be. Every time they, they thought we needed a new ministry, that we would hire more staff. Well, nowadays we can't afford more staff. So we've got to realize that it really is up to us. But let's say it was. So there was this one job posted for a night watchman. And the interviewer is greeting the next applicant. And the first thing he says to the applicant is, what are your qualifications for the job of night watchman? And the applicant replies, Alabama, don't we? 
further, especially nowadays with our um, with our internet service. I was on a, um, a whiteboard training this week for um, how do we welcome seekers into the church and who are the seekers. And the good news is that the seekers are on the internet. so that we can reach those seekers that are out there. But, you know, I know a lot of you are too. It also says in scripture that Jesus went to their meeting places. And I learned also on this whiteboard training that I did this week that uh, there are three physical locations when things roll out a little bit more that our seekers are going to. First, my, you might guess this one, they're going to coffee houses or restaurants. do they go besides coffee houses they go to um, parks 49% of seekers go to parks we didn't think of looking for seekers there and 45% of seekers go to movies theaters these are places that we could be going where they meet all the time instead of just staying in our own zip code maybe eat and instead of just staying on a Facebook. We need to go a little bit further and meet our seekers where they are. That's what Jesus did. That's where he, what he was teaching us to do as we pull in the harvest. Now what Jesus was saying was interesting too. What was Jesus saying here? His, he was talking about the kingdom of God. And the way the message puts it is, is that it's kingdom news. It's kind of like headlines. He was doing the story of the church the story of what God was doing in people's lives. Now, what would he be doing? Well, he could be telling the story of, of a baptism during the, the COVID time. And uh, so this one pastor was asked to do a baptism of, of a youth who was really ready to, to receive baptism. But wanting to stay six feet distant, the pastor took the garden hose and squirted everybody. <laughs> First, the, the baptismal candidate with the words, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then everybody, renew your baptism vows. Now, how ingenious is that? It can be done. It can be done. We can teach what God is doing in this world. Isn't God in the fact that some of our ladies have been making masks for everybody, and, and we've had some on here? You know, isn't God in that, and isn't that one of the kingdom news? And I think Jesus was ingenious about doing all this kingdom news. And then the next thing that he did, he, he started healing, right? He, he worried about their disease and prayed over them and touched them and their healing. And then through all that, you know, if, if that was, if that was, uh, that should have been enough. But then he started looking at them and they were, they were upset. They weren't getting this. They were going, if Jesus preaching kingdom news and, and healing everybody wasn't enough for them to get what he was talking about, I mean, how hard is it going to be for us? And he says, okay, now there's, I want to give you the NIV translation too, but the message says confused and aimless, and NIV says harassed and helpless. We're talking about people whose lives can't be easily fixed with a sermon. And that's most of us. It's not that easy. Just a devotional message isn't going to fix things for us. And it's not going to fix things for the people out there who are really looking in their soul for something more. They don't even know what they're looking for. They have to be directed. Directed to something that can really help. Now we could go deeper and deeper into those words and truly figure out what they mean, but... That's an academic rabbit hole, and we don't have to travel down that to know that 
It's more than just the good news. It's more than just healing broken bodies. It's being the heart and soul of Jesus to the world. Because there is a big harvest right out there. And that's why Jesus is giving the job. And when somebody says, why do you choose job, Jesus? I say, it's because he gave me a job and there's a lot to do. Now there was this guy named Billy Graham that was very, very good at his job. And they say in, in 2016, even in our churches, 48% of people in the churches had heard a sermon or from Billy Graham either in person or on TV or read a sermon. Can I just see hands right now of wh whoever, did you, have you, any of you read a Billy Graham sermon or seen him on TV? We got some here. How about you in the cars? Honk if you've, if you've done it. I want to hear those honks. Okay, and you can text if you're on the other side of the screen, you can text in there, and even if you're seeing this on YouTube, find a way to communicate. I Say that I've seen Billy Graham. Okay, now you know how good he was. Really good. In fact, his, uh, his uh, staff says that um, he led 3.2 million people to Jesus Christ. That's a lot of people. And even though he was that good, he was still humble enough to tell this story. So he was in a small town, and he, he asked a kid on the street for directions to the post office. And then he took that opportunity to open up and say, well, I am here giving um, a sermon um, to teach people on how to get to the kingdom of God, how to get to heaven. Will you come? And so the little boy says, I don't think so. You can't even get to the post office. How do you expect me to think you're going to get to heaven? <laughs> now, in another story, I have two stories about Billy Graham. I love this story. Um, he's on an elevator with friends, and the elevator's kind of crowded, and, and this guy gets in on the, on the fifth floor, and uh, he says, the guy says, I hear that Billy Graham is, is on this elevator. And the friend says, yeah, he's right over there. And th the stranger comes over to Billy Graham and looks him up and down for 30 seconds. <laughs> and then he says, my, what an anticlimax. <laughs> now, friends, if, if Billy Graham can keep working on his stuff, and he did until 2018, that's when he passed, you know, he worked all his life on, on bringing people to the kingdom. If, if it we can do that too. We can't be discouraged just because we didn't get it right the first time. Just because, you know, in this little trial period of how to do this outside, we didn't get everything right. I didn't start with a microphone. I mean, it's okay. We'll get over it. We need to be big enough that we can, we can help God out. There are 50 million seekers in the United States. 37% of them volunteer or give to food banks. Do you guys like to do that? Of course we do. We work with food banks all the time. 35% of them volunteer or give to animal shelters, rescue places. Wouldn't that be a cool ministry? 40% of them like to go to parks or sit in their backyard and reflect on life. We do that too. They are not so different than us. The seekers that need Jesus need us to reach out to them and show them exactly where Jesus is. The harvest time has come. Let us pray for our harvesters. Grateful are we, God, that you continue to call us and continue to, to, to give us jobs to do. Uh, we may not all be preachers or all be teachers, but we all have something to do. And we are grateful, Lord, that we can contribute our time and talent for the good of your kingdom, for bringing in the harvest. This we give you thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed that message, and, and now it's time for another a song together, and I invite, I guess Carol is going to help Lisa out. Uh, before that, just want to thank everyone for continuing their giving to the church via the many means possible, either by mailing your offering in or submitting it electronically. We do have offering boxes here. Um, 
we will not be passing the offering plates, but feel free to drop your offering there or continue it um, in an electronic form. We will say a quick prayer um, for the offering. Touch these gifts, O God, with your manifold blessings. Touch our very lives that we may be instruments of your hope. May our gifts and our lives bring your healing, love, and compassion to a world in need. Amen. Is so sweet to trust in Jesus, verses 1 and 3. Feel free to come along if you are familiar. Let me share a few announcements as we finish here. Um, I have news. We have gotten our um, original website name to connect with our website. So this is our how to reach us on the website. It's canegoumc.org. That's it, right? Took me two days to get that to work. <laughs> First time I tried, so I've been trying. So that, that's finally together. That's my big news. Um, leadership team will be meeting at 12:30 today um, on Zoom, so that we can kind of review how things went. Um, appreciate all the uh, feedback that we get. You know, if you have been listening through the airwaves, give us one of us a call. Um, we'd like to know. Text us to tell me how it did, how it worked. Um, if it, you have an online experience on the feed, uh, website feed, uh, just give that information back to us. We want to know. So, and then next week, the 21st, Father's Day, our plan is for everybody to be welcome here at the, the backyard of the church in the garden. Um, we, have, we will have instructions for you during the week. Uh, and... Uh, some will still feel uncomfortable and not ready to come. That is okay. But as you come, you will be asked whether you want to park or you want to sit in the, the grassy area with your mask on. Um, and all of us have been doing, you've been doing a great job today and I really appreciate all that, um, the help that we've been getting to, to, to model that for you. Um, and if you want to park, you'll be given instructions on how to park and listen. So it's all good. Uh, you can find us in many places, and I really appreciate all that you have done these last three months. I, I can't tell you how different it is now to, to have collaboration and to, to get this together in a new way. Um, but we're, we're going to get it right. And I appreciate that. I appreciate Dan. He's, he's got amazing music, and he figured out this how to put this on FM 99.1 so that they can listen in their cars. And I appreciate Lisa and Carol helping me out and Ben helping me out. It's been really helpful to, to get this together. Yesterday, we had an amazing group of people um, cleaning this area and cleaning the benches. Uh, so 
you were all awesome and you worked so hard. I, I know you slept well last night uh, because I did too, um, because it was kind of exhausting. But this is a good day. And please tell your friends and family that uh, the church is worshiping again in person, uh, although there are restrictions as, as this, that's lifted and we go into stage four and stage five, um, we might even be back at the church. If it rains next week, we're just online. We're not ready to be back in the sanctuary yet, okay? So those are the, the restrictions. But God willing, it will be sunny, and we will welcome a nice crowd um, next week. So now, with the peace of God hanging in the air, go in his love and go in his grace. Amen.